the key to the game is playing the man, not the cards. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a Nerd Enthusiast Poker Podcast. I'm Anthony Itahogi. Here alongside me is Brian, not the man Keen. Um, we we have a special guest today. We have an interview today. Um, and before listen, before we get into this, I just had this conversation two days ago uh, at a table in Vegas, and I I think it's official now. I can say this: we are a lucky podcast. Yes, we, we got lucky, lucky with podcast. this one. <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm telling you. Listen, this, I'm gonna tell you why we're lucky. We've had Ryan Dodd. Ryan Dodd came on the next month. He smashes for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. OK, then we book Frankie Finero, who we still are trying to get on the show. He's he's confirmed he's coming on the show, but he's smashing every tournament in between. Then we book we book today's guest like last month. And then she goes on. And we'll talk about it a little bit. She just had a huge run over the weekend. So I'm going to say it. we're we're a lucky podcast. We we if you come on our show, there's like guaranteed luck coming yes. your way. We're, we're like we're like, uh, what's that? Like, what's the bridesmaids movie where she like like. All the people that she dates before winds up getting married afterwards. I can't remember what that is, but like that's what it is. So if you come on the show, you're bound <laughs> to have a deep run and a solid score in your next tournament. That is a guarantee. Yeah. So if you confirm with our show, it like it boom, the luck flows. So uh but without getting further too much into it, we'll talk about that a little bit. We have Poker Face Ash, aka Ashley Frank on the show. So welcome. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for having me. Well, we appreciate it. Um so I, I, you came on my radar, I guess about a year or two ago. Um, I was writing an article about upcoming, uh, YouTube poker streamers, vloggers, and, uh, you caught my attention and I've been following you ever since, um, on YouTube. And then I reached out to Brian and he's been following you as well. Um, but before we get into YouTube, let, let's, let's jump back. So where, who are you and where are you from? Let's start from the beginning. Yeah, well, my name is Ashley. I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona, just recently moved over to Dallas, Texas, and that was a huge, huge life change for me. But um, grew up and uh, just in a really nice home and uh, just great family environment. My dad owned a music store growing up, so I was around music my whole life and um, didn't find poker till later in life. So actually, I played college basketball, did that for um, my whole college career kind of found poker within that um we had team game nights and our coach taught us how to play poker one night because we had these bonding nights where we'd get together and hang out and Thanks. just kind of de yeah, developed a love for it back then but really didn't start taking it seriously till about the last four years okay what um what college did you go to so it was a smaller school it's called southwestern college it's now called arizona christian university so yeah, I, I was able to play all four years and just played a lot of played a lot of minutes, had fun, and <laughs> yeah, it was a blast. Yeah, so Not I didn't have like a demo, a, like a, a, a <laughs> demographics or or like a biography. How tall are you? <laughs> I'm five foot three, so oh. I definitely was. <laughs> I was definitely a point guard. Real, okay, real small, but yeah, so you're was, like a I staff. Was... You're a shooter. Yeah, shooter, dribbler, passer. I did it all. Yeah. And I was an all American in college. So it was it was my life. It was definitely it was oh, definitely wow. my passion in life and until I had to no choice but to hang it up. I went to play I went on to a coach college basketball for a few years and I was kind of a traveling musician during all this time as well. So poker didn't come until way later. We we should we should cut this segment out and then in Vegas use this the hustle people uh, when <laughs> yeah. it was like i'm like listen i'll pick a girl to play against another female here uh how about her she's kind of short she's probably okay we'll i've actually had some talks with uh andrew nimi about this we were joking about hustling people in vegas because i have a lot of prop bets this this summer like with jamin from the drawing dead vlog we're gonna get a shooting competition and yeah. they, all, they all think they're gonna beat me and they they just don't know what's about to happen so all right i got i'm gonna have to put some money down on you that's then. awesome I think that's yeah we want, we want to get some odds on it we we know the ringer <laughs> and these bets so we got to get in on it Absolutely. Nice, nice. So I, I guess the competitive nature, I mean, a lot, I, I see that trend a lot, um, you know, in the poker world is that there's usually some kind of competitive nature in the background, like just discipline of playing sports. Me and Brian grew up playing sports. Um, yep. You know, we see that a lot. And I think does that help you, you think, trend into this community? A hundred million percent. Like, and that's kind of what sparked me to try and learn and get better at poker is I realized it was a game of skill. I, I, I first just thought it was like more gambling, you know, just just luck of the draw type thing. And I actually was watching a, a WSOP on e back when it was on ESPN, I believe. And they were doing they were covering the main event, the $10,000 buy in. 
and um, they were doing a little segment on Greg Mueller, who's now through a crazy story, one of my good friends. And he's been in the he's won like three bracelets and just very accomplished, plays high stakes. And he used to be a hockey player. And so he's a professional hockey player. And he was they were interviewing him in the segment about how just poker kind of fueled that competitive fire he had that he couldn't really pursue in hockey anymore because he was retired and I totally related to that because I was like oh like this is a game where you can be competitive against other people and once those like that kind of got rolling in my brain that's that's where it was like okay you can take this seriously you can study you can learn you can get better and it really just kind of snowballed from there but a hundred percent you know that competitive fire really drives me in poker and it definitely comes out in, in poker for sure when when did you so you started playing college basketball nights but like when did you start like your actual first dig into a live casino or a live tournament, like when did that start? Yeah, so I started playing out playing on full tilt in college and put some money off my credit card, and so so sad I lost like a hundred bucks. That was so much money at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah devastating. Was just, yeah, it was devastating, and I'm like trying to get it back, so I deposited more money, and yeah, so I did that for on and off for like a couple of years, but I had no idea what I was doing. It wasn't until I was about maybe 25 or 26 where I stepped foot in a casino for the first time, and I played. Uh, one three and one two, I believe, and uh, with like all the money I had at the time, you know, I'd save up from a paycheck, to put a couple hundred bucks down on the table, and just you know, just try to grind it out. So yeah, and even then, I really wasn't playing like a lot. I would play very part time, very very part time, and so it wasn't until like three or four years ago I was actually like trying to play for a living. And so it looks like I'm just kind of going through it, but it looks like maybe 2018 you started taking it. Series. I'm. I have your Hendon up on the side here. So yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, you're yeah. the number two trending person on Hendon today. Number two. Exactly. They dropped up. Yeah. I mean, that's. that's I, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get into why that. We'll get into why that is in a couple of minutes. But yes. <laughs> Lucky, I'm yeah, telling you, book you, people book this show. It's they're gold. They're good. So. I'm gonna have to come back yeah. again in that case. <laughs> yeah, come Maybe back right for the main. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so 2018, it looks like you started really digging in there. A little um, bit more, yeah. And then it looks like you kind of hit your first score playing tournament-wise. It looks like June 27th, 2018, that was the Rio Deep Stacks. And I, listen, I love, I've also had a deep cash in that as well. I chopped a final table. I love that okay. tournament. It is, Good. it's, yeah, it is an awesome tournament to play in. They get so many people. It's a cheap buy-in. It, the stack starts solid. It goes fast, but. Um, yeah, that story was actually crazy that 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 score I had because up until two days ago that was my highest score for, for the last three four years whatever I actually never really played tournaments before I only grinded cash and I decided to go and try and play in the World Series that year you know I was kind of like starstruck being at the you know at the Rio and just yeah, everything about it was just so awesome and ended up uh, just getting so lucky, like running good and just ended up getting fourth for 13K. And that really sparked my tournament interest and just kind of got that, got that fever, that tournament fever. And I haven't yeah. stopped playing. I have not stopped playing tournaments since that day. Like it really, I don't know if it was a blessing or a curse yet, but I love tournaments <laughs> and that, that, that started my passion for it for sure. So you, so you play cash and tournaments. What do you prefer more? Yeah. tournaments 100 percent. like ever since that day it's just like sparked that love for tournaments because you know you we win all that money you're you're, yes. in the, you're on the final table playing i was at the time i was playing for forty thousand dollars up top yep. which was like the most money i could ever think of you know to, you know and so uh but for my vlog and for for my youtube channel i love to um play cash games because people love to to watch the cash games um so i try to do a little bit of both but now with my sponsorship with poker bros i got to play you know uh tournaments each month and so I, I have to play tournament series. So for that, I definitely just play a lot more tournaments these days. <laughs> so so jumping back to uh, YouTube, how so how did that start? Where did where did that idea or what made you think to do that? Yeah, so I think it was back in probably uh, when when was that? Like thirteen k was twenty nineteen. So that right was after twenty eighteen, the summer 2018. of twenty eighteen. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so right after that, I started like I changed my uh, uh, Instagram handle from like my my music band I was in my music to my musician name to poker face 87 <laughs> and I started like posting about me playing poker again still terrible at poker and had no idea what I was doing but I started posting on there and then my friend kind of said one day he was like hey at the one two tables at my local casino he said 
you should check out Andrew Nini on poker or on YouTube. He does a poker vlog. And I said, oh, what? <laughs> so I go, I go home and he sends me the link and I check it out. And I was absolutely hooked. I mean, just sitting there watching a guy play at the table in Vegas, like you felt like you were there with him. Nobody had ever done that before. And it was just, I mean, I was hooked. And so I actually started getting better because of watching him. And so one day, him and Brad end up coming to my tiny casino in Chandler, Arizona, and decided to travel their first ever out-of-state meetup game. And they came there, and it was packed, and I showed up, and I knew Andrew used to be a drummer, so and I actually had a music clothing line at the time. So I brought him a music shirt, and I gave it to him, and I just was like starstruck a little bit. I was like, I know you used to play drums, so I you know, have this shirt for you. And he ended up following me back on Instagram that night, really thanked me for the gift, and uh, we talk about it and laugh about it to this day, but um, we're friends now. And um, so meeting him uh, through him, I met Jamin and those two guys, like because I was posting on my Instagram and you posting my stories, uh, they're like, you're already kind of vlogging. Why don't you just put it on YouTube? And I was like, no, not ready. Not good enough. You know, li like I just I don't think I could put myself out there like that. And they're like, just do it. Just do it. Well, it wasn't until two years later, I finally listened to them and I'm so glad that I did because um, there was no females at the time really in that space at all. And yeah, uh, I was so gonna say you you kind of found the little niche there early, like you got into that market space because like that was one of the things when I was writing that article and I was looking for up and coming YouTubers, it was all male. It was, and then I found you, and at the time, you know, you had a couple thousand subscribers, I think. Um, and so I was like, all right, well, she's up and coming. Let's add her to the list. And but there there was you're right, there was very little, and I would say consistent. There was a couple of videos here and there, people, but. Right. You were starting to do it consistently, and I think that's what kind of really got you traction going. Yeah, exactly. I think that got me a lot of traction as well as starting at the time that I did. Right after quarantine, people are still kind of like at home watching videos, and, um, and now the market is super, super saturated with all kinds of poker vloggers. And so I think I got in really lucky at the right time. I wish I would have started a couple years sooner, but I I, def I wasn't ready, and it was it all worked out the way it was supposed to. Um, but I have Jamin and Andrew to thank for kind of like really pushing me to do it for sure. So That's I have awesome. a quick question. So yeah. you you went you went to school, smaller school. You played ball. Um, yeah. What did you What did you What was your original plan in life? Like what What did you go to college for? Like I know you said you were a musician, but like let's take poker out of it. What was What was the first plan that you had post? You know, I would say teen years, but like transitioning into adulthood. Yeah, I think I never saw my life without basketball. So it was kind of hard to say, you know, I'm not going to like be in the WNBA someday or something like that. So I think I wanted to coach college basketball. I think that was what I wanted to do. Um, I got a psychology uh, major with a minor in biblical studies because uh, I went to a Christian school and we had to. Um, but uh, yeah, psychology degree, I thought maybe I'd want to be a counselor or psychologist or something, but then I realized how much school was involved and I'm not really that big on like school. So I just really went to college because I wanted to play basketball and um, probably was either going to be a college coach or a traveling musician, which I did for many, many, many years. So then that doesn't come to fruition. You come home to mom and dad and you say, hey, so I think I'm going to be a professional poker <laughs> vlogger and, and really a professional <laughs> poker player. What was their response? Because like I always, like I'm always the guy who asks like, I don't want to say the real life questions, but I want to know like how that went over with mom and dad. Yeah. So um, throughout all of that time in my life, my like from age 20 to 30, I was helping my dad man manage his local music store in Phoenix. He had like this really cool staple store. We sold pianos, guitars, all that stuff. And so I thought maybe I might take that over, but I realized it wasn't for me. And so he was retiring and I, I was kind of working for him uh, kind of part to full time. And I, he was retiring and selling the business and I had to figure out something to do. So I was like, you know what? I'm kind of already making more playing poker hourly than I am working for my dad. Maybe I should like give this a shot. So uh, we talked about it and they, my dad is a very like risk adverse kind of person and he was not for it at all. And, and also <laughs> compounding the fact where, uh, that my parents are very conservative. So gambling was never really uh, yeah. part of our life. Like we didn't grow up playing cards. It wasn't like that at all. <laughs> so uh, they were 
very supportive and loving, probably very skeptical though. Um, mm-hmm. and, and now, you know, just coming home with a ring and, and 25 K in cash, they, they, I hope that they kind of see that I'm doing okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. It kind of legitimizes it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause I think they get, my dad just, he's always like, are you sure you don't want to do something, you know, where you have, you know, some solidified income and uh, I, He's such a smart guy. He's actually like a Mensa genius and he's a ma- he used to be a math teacher. And so he understands that it's like a game of like plus EV decisions. So over time, you know, over playing thousands of hands, you're going to come out a winner. Even if I come home and lose like 800 bucks today, like it's, you know, so I, he gets it. Totally gets it. <laughs> so um, a couple more questions I had about YouTube and then we'll jump into this, uh, you know, what we've kind of been hinting at is this big win that you recently just had. Um, with the YouTube. So, I mean, obviously we're doing stuff with YouTube. Other people are doing stuff with YouTube. Now, do you do all your own editing? Did you do all that or yourself or did you hire someone? Like how did you, cause that seems like to be one of the hardest things to do is like getting, it's not, it's very easy to just set up the camera. Like that's the easy part. It's all the other stuff afterwards. How did you get into all that stuff? Or did Oh you... yeah. Editing is just, I mean, brutal. It is just a full-time job in and of itself. I'm sorry, Chef. Can you repeat that? Can I'm I repeat sorry, that? I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, Chef. Let me repeat it. Editing is just, I mean, brutal. It is just a full-time job in and of itself. So I was editing my own vlogs up until about I hit about 10K subscribers. And I had a few people reach out via email. And this one guy just seemed super eager to help out. And um, he he he's now still one of my full time editors. I have actually have a couple people working on my stuff now, and I have a second channel too. That's more of like a lifestyle vlog. So I have like three editors or maybe four in there that kind of I circle through. But two main editors now, and they do everything for me because if I didn't have them, I would not be able to to travel and do what I do. And <laughs> so I had to finally like delegate it out, and it was really tough because I I mean I've been a musician. I'm very creative, so to kind of let go of that create creative uh, aspect was a little bit hard for me because I I loved like creating the story and my vlogs my earlier vlogs were more stories than what they are now is more like poker hands and strategy right. and stuff but um yeah it, it was a hard thing to give up but at the same time I kind of had no choice because of just traveling and stuff now now you're traveling a lot uh, I know you're down in Texas now um I guess my question is this what what have you learned about living on the road? Like what's maybe a word of advice, advice you could give to other people about traveling? Um, priorities and balance, I think are the two words that come to my mind because last year, especially WSOP summer, like I said, I was going to work out every day. I said I was going to eat healthy and I literally did the opposite. And um, then uh, after that, I'm like, you know, I really like I've always been fit, you know, just playing uh, basketball and stuff, always been into the gym and stuff. And I really was just not doing what I wanted to. And it took me kind of hiring a trainer and then he kind of got me going. And then now I literally it's just a priority. Like it's a non-negotiation. Like I'm going to work out, you know, mm-hmm. and, and unless I play for 15 hours one day and I have to get rest to play a day two or something, which actually happened this trip. That's OK. You And so that comes with the other word is balance. Um, just realizing what you need, staying healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, making sure you create a space for yourself where you can allow yourself to rest when you need to take time when you need to, like on on my break. The other day, I just went into my room and just laid down and meditated for a little bit, like just being aware of what you need. So life on the road, the two things for me is prioritizing what's important and balance. And so that's that's what I've been learning. And it's still a struggle. It's very much a struggle for me to kind of realize what you need. So Wait. not to sound like a stalker, but what, once we <laughs> kind of booked you. No, no, I just I, I have this question set aside about your fitness. Um so I, I saw you posted something um, that alluded to the fact that you like were you using Beachbody or like body.com or Beachbody.com with your fitness? Because, look, <laughs> all we, my friends make fun both, of me. Like, so yeah, we both just, use this uh, just program. to tell like a little self story. Like, yes, I was not not a stellar athlete, but like I'm I was always very um, hyper focused on my physical fitness and stuff like that. And I had a really bad shoulder injury. Um, probably like now over 10 years ago and I couldn't do the same things that I used to be able to do. And like, I had found like, you know, like P90X and I'm like, ah, let me just try this out. And like, from that moment, I was like absolutely hooked on like beach body, everything that they offered. And then I saw you posted it and I'm like, I need to ask her like how she found it. And like, if, if that's like, like, do you use that primarily as like your go-to or 
Yeah, I'll tell you what I used. So I actually had, I was planning uh, after I stopped coaching uh, college ball, I was actually training to play overseas. I got an agent and then I, I ended up having a really bad shoulder injury and decided that I was just going to coach instead of try to play professionally overseas. Um, and I kind of found P90X. I actually had found P90 in high school, I think, yeah, before huh? it was P90X. Um, but I just think it's a really solid weightlifting program. And so that's why I still use it to this day. Um, so what I do is I do a hybrid of P90X and Insanity. So I'm doing um, uh, weightlifting and John, the high. John T. High, <laughs> yes, John T. <laughs> he's, kicks Jersey, my butt. he's a New Jersey in. Yeah. Yeah, he's he from New Jersey. My freaking butt. But yeah, so I do the high intensity interval training and the, the, yep. the uh, weightlifting. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. It's that's tough. Cool. I, think, I think that's a good program too for. I know Brian, Brian's, I've used Beachbody and P90X. Brian like swears by, he lives it, he does it all the time. It's great, yeah. I feel like though, if I was on the road 24 seven, I think that's like the way to go because half the time, the casino, hotel, gyms are like pure crap most of the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> For a while, like I will name drop the win this weekend, what has like one of the best gyms I've been to. Like Same. them, Regatta, they have solid gyms, but there's very few and far between because a lot of them are like, one treadmill, some crappy yeah. Smith machine that doesn't work, and like yeah. three free weights, and you're like, okay, I'll see what I can do here. Yeah, what I like about Insanity is it's a body weight, so you don't yeah. need any equipment. I just need like this much space, and I can run and jump or whatever, you know, in place or whatever. So I'll, sometimes I'll literally, if there's no good gym and no free weights, I will just do my Insanity workout in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that that's perfect. It's perfect no for excuses. that. Because... No excuses. No excuses. Absolutely. No excuse. But I like what you said about how. You have to find a balance because, um, and I, I don't know how how old are you now? Thirty five. Okay, so yeah, so Anthony and I are on the <laughs> verge of forty. So like yeah. I know how we were in our early twenties and like mid twenties. Like we would go to Vegas and we had absolutely no balance. I mean, Anthony doesn't really <laughs> drink. He doesn't. He doesn't. He he's not. He doesn't partake in that. But me, I'd be playing. You know, pretty pretty much still still in b pretty bad shape at the poker table and it's pretty much just laying late money on fire and it wasn't yep. until we started taking a little bit more seriously where we've you know we've realized that like yeah there's time for partying but you kind of got to dial it back and and stay with your routine that you would have if you weren't you know in vegas getting caught up in all the you know the hoopla with it so yeah i think, I think good for as i got yeah, I've just as I've gotten older, I also understand what my body needs a little bit more. So I know, like, I can't function and go play a day two if I only get six hours of sleep. So just understanding my body and just realizing what I need is has been really huge, and just trying to like make that a priority for sure. So okay, so we're gonna jump into this, and I'm gonna it's actually gonna segue into your big win that you had this past week. And I had a ask this. So you went to was it Tulsa, right? Yeah, Tulsa, Oklahoma, yep. Okay, so you went to Tulsa for the WSP circuit event. Now, did you, because I was following on Twitter, just wanted to keep up to speed what was going on before we had the interview this week, and then I saw you were driving to Tulsa. Now, did you drive right in and play the tournament that day? <laughs> yeah, so I literally called up a few friends on the drive. It was a five-hour drive, and I said, I don't really want to drive up today, but I have to go play this uh, this ladies' event because it's going to be my best chance to win a ring, and I'm going to go up and I'm going to win this ring. <laughs> I literally drove up late, Reg, and just binked yeah. it. <laughs> so, that, like, just forget about everything we just talked about, about balance and time and sleep. <laughs> that is... That is probably one of my biggest downfalls, and I just had a situation this past week. I felt the same way. I literally flew in. I played day one, and I just played horrendous. I felt like I just played. There were so many mistakes that I made, and I try to stay away from that because I have such an issue. I need like that day in between a rest to yep. reset, restart, and I was watching you, and I'm like, she just rolled in, and then like I saw on the Twitter feed, like, you know, five hours later, I'm like, I'm like she just got there, I think. I, I'm like, am I saying this right? So- yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, you know, we'll give it away. You, you won the ladies' event, your first circuit ring. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, let's let's talk about that. You you rolled into town and just said, "Hey, I'm coming for it." Here we go. Yeah. So I did get sleep the night before preparing to do this. So in my defense, you know, I I wasn't trying to be like too crazy about it, but I did know I needed to go do this so I could try and win. And so I drove up five hours. Uh, literally got to my hotel, put my bags in, went to go play. $250 buy-in and it started at 4 p.m. I got there maybe at like five or something and 
um, made it just all the way to the final like couple tables. And it wasn't until I think there was about um, 18 to 20 people left. And I had about I had about 10 percent of the chips in play. And I was like, I can do this. Like I kind of saw like uh, with about 12 people left. Sorry, I had about 10 percent of the chips in play. And I was like, I think I have a decent shot at this. Um, heading into the final table, one of my good friends, Haley, who's uh, just won a GPI award for best uh, photo of the year um, for the WSOP, she was chip leading by piles. She had like the most chips. So I knew it was going to be uphill battle to win because she had all the chips and I just wasn't sure how it was going to happen. But we, I ended up finding some really good spots. And a key hand was going all in with ace queen versus pocket kings. And of course, yeah. I hit it. I hit an ace. Um, and yeah, I, I got there. I, I It's happened to me many times. So I was happy to be <laughs> on the other end when we're playing for a ring. Um, Haley ends up getting chipped down after she had some really good bluffs that just actually didn't work, but they were, they were, she's a really aggressive player. I had a lot of respect for her game. Um, she ended up busting. So then I find myself heads up. I was about a three to one dog. Um, so she had me three to one and, uh, me and whether her name's Christina, we ended up playing heads up for the ring for three hours. Oh, and, wow. uh, it was actually cool that we were deep enough because even heads up, I had over 30 big. So it wasn't like we were super short. And she had just won the ladies ring um, a couple months ago or a month ago. So she she wanted to like, she's like, I want to just chop and say we could play it out for the ring. She's like, but I really want the ring. So I'll be a back to back <laughs> ladies champion. I was like, hey, I get it. Like, let's just battle this out. So we just kind of decided to, to battle it out. And um, she had me for a while and I finally just found some spots and slowly ch chipped up and, and, uh, finally, finally got her, um, the big, the hand that kind of put her down to like almost no chips was I had ace queen versus her ace jack and held. So, um, yeah. And then the last hand was ace king versus pocket fours and I hit an ace or a king and that was it. And I actually just posted this today on my Instagram account by reaction because my friend was there filming it. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, Nothing's better than the feeling of actually pulling it out without a chop. Right, I mean, right, Anthony's right. been there. I've been there a few times, and like, I'll never, I'll never refuse it. But then when people refuse it for one reason or another, I'm like, winning this is going to be that much better if it happens. <laughs> okay. Exactly, and it just, it just feels, it just feels that much better. So, congrats yeah, to you. That's I awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It was kind of like a big relief, like a monkey off my back, because like, you know, you look at these guys like Rampage, just absolutely crushing like rings, you know, whatever these high roller events in his YouTube channels taking off. You got Mariano, who's like crushing these live cash, these huge cash games. Brad Owen just like exploded and all these guys that are in my space, like they're they're making a name, you know, putting themselves out there. I'm like, I want to win a ring like I need some hardware under my belt. And yeah, yeah it was a small ladies event. And um, but, you know, this is just the first of many. It was just kind of getting my foot in the door of like, hey, I'm here. I can play and just getting my name on the map. And it just it just felt so just so relieving. That was, it, so, was, it solidifies like everything, you know, yeah, exactly. legitimizes it all. Exactly. Yep, for sure. Yep. Now, exactly. two things. Well, then you jump right into the main event. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. you end up like final table. Well, that, that was a final table, right? You final table. Yeah. That? Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> still good. I'm still bummed about that final table, but yeah, so it was a $1,700 main event. I think there was like 500-ish en entries, and I ended up getting seventh place. I came into the final table like <laughs> on top of chips and just couldn't win a hand at the final table. It was it was really brutal. Um, uh, Still a little bit sad about that finish because I could have easily won a lot more money, but eh. And oh, second ring back to back, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would have been, been, yeah. That would have been a story. Jeez. But hey, yeah. you can't sneeze at twenty grand. I mean, that's that's <laughs> always that's always a solid payday, especially when you're kind of grinding grinding for your meals. You know what I mean? So yeah, and and finally, at. finally beat my high score of thirteen k, which was pretty cool, and put me over a hundred k on hand and mop. So there's a lot of like just um, well, like bucket list, like check marks off my goal list this week. Week was so cool, so cool. And like we said, you are like the number two trending female on hending at the moment. <laughs> oh, so you're. Uh, <laughs> your, that should hopefully help your YouTube numbers and everything like that as well, and Be that's cool. awesome. Um, yeah. So okay, so what's the game plan now? Like what what's uh, what's what's coming up for you? Oh man, I have a lot coming up. I am going to be gone the whole month of April. I think I'm I'm think I'm here home for only about four days out of the month, and I'm going to 
uh, Jacksonville, Florida, going to the WPT Choctaw, and then headed to Downstream, which is in Iowa, I believe. Um, so I have a lot of tournaments, just a lot of tournament series coming up, and hopefully find time to vlog some cash games in between. Okay, and then, so now with this ring, you have a seat into the Tournament of Champions. Yes, um, yes. That... I, I didn't even, I wanted the ring so bad, I forgot, like, that was an extra bonus. So I was like, oh my gosh, I get to play for a million dollar free roll. Like, that's nuts. freaking nuts. <laughs> so, so, super stoked. So, um, what's your seri your World Series plan? Are you going to be out there the entire series? Or, like, what's the game plan there? Yeah, so I'm going to be there from June 1st through July 15th, or whenever I end up winning the main. And uh, <laughs> Well, me and, me and Brian are both playing it. <laughs> so you're going to have to go through us, just letting you know. Just yeah, that's you know. fair. That's fair. And that's fair. So, um, like, past couple years, like, I just go and go. I will literally register every freaking tournament in the day to the point where I would just run myself into the ground, get frustrated, get tilted. So this year, the words are quality over quantity. And okay. I'm going to try really hard to stick to that. Although when you're there, you just want to fire all the tournaments. I'm going to try to be really selective this year and pl probably play – you know, some bracelet events, but I also love the other stuff going on, like at the Aria, like I, right. I, find, I ICM chopped that one uh, last year, which was awesome. So just just events like that, that are like all the crushers won't necessarily be at and they have good prize pools. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah there, and of course, I'll play bracelet events. But There's a lot of great events. And I, I tell everyone this, you know, a lot of people go, oh, you go out there and they think you're just playing all the high rollers. I'm like, listen. No matter what your bankroll is, there's literally something for everyone. There's hundred dollar yep. buy-ins that get like three hundred people, and there's yep. ten thousand dollar buy-ins like every day almost. There's something in between those ranges. You can find three five hundred dollar tournaments a week. You know, there's so many great things going on. The I love Golden it. Nugget, the Venetian, you know, Win Aria, like they all have such great series. The Rio Deep Stacks. I mean, there's just so much, and the prize pools are great and. Those like softer fields are just they're a good experience and they don't crush your roll. It's like okay, I play a three hundred dollar tournament, first place is forty thousand dollars, you know. So exactly. there is a lot of good uptick uh, tournaments that you can not have your bankroll crushed in. But yeah, I think that's a good point. How there's something for everybody out there, and I think that's what like so amazing. Like even if I can't, I'm I'm not gonna fire this three k today. Well, I can go play the daily deep stack for two hundred bucks, you know, or whatever. So. It's it's fun. It's like Christmas for me. I love yeah. being out there. I don't have to focus on anything except tournaments. And I'm so I'm getting really ahead with my vlogs. So like I'm a backlogged for about a month so I can just be there and not have to f worry about like my editing or vlogging, which is going to be amazing. I'm so looking forward to it. I mean, no, you're running when, hot just looking at your stats <laughs> from the beginning of the year. I mean, you're going in there on a heater. It, I'd be I'd be shocked if you didn't make a deep run in something for a sizable score because Everyone that really we've been kind of following, um, it it's that upward trend. It, it, it there's always that little bink spot where it, it, you just get into some sort of zone, or you, everything's working for you. Every play's working. You know your your big hands are holding, your flips are holding, and next thing you know, you're scoring you know six figures here and there, and it's like boom, like you just make that that ascension up up the chain. So yeah, we. Uh, we're definitely we're definitely rooting for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I really think there's something to that. Like, it's, it's, it's talking to my friend about this. It's like there there's just something to getting your foot in that door, like winning the ring. Now I just I see it possible, and so I've seen the path to do it, and so now it just becomes like this this expectation in my mind of like, okay, I I know I can do this. And same with like running deep in the main and final tabling. Like I know how it tastes. I know how it feels. So now I can kind of see it. And just that snowball effect is, is yeah. real. I don't know what it is, but there's something to it. Maybe it's just a shift in a positive energy in your mind. You know, maybe, you know, I don't know what it is, but I just think there's the, I, I just keep telling everyone, like, I'm going to try and ride this wave as much as I can. What, so I know you told us that you watched um, some videos, but what's your, what's your studying training habits? Like, what, what do you do to enhance your skills? Um, so I've been using a lot of, especially for tournament spots lately, I've been using the GTO wizard. Um, I think it's great to just, I'll just go in there and just play hands and just know, okay, from this, you know, this position with this stack depth, I shouldn't be opening these hands or, you know, whatever. And then um, also studying with my one-on-one -on -one coach, Fausto Valdez, who owns pl uh, blueprintcoaching.com. And um, he's kind of my one-on-one -on -one coach. And then uh, in the past, I've worked with Solve for Why. Um, and currently I have um, 
doing some work with with advanced poker training, which has been super awesome with Steve Blay and Alex Fitzgerald. So um, just a little bit of everything, really. I'm also kind of was diving into chip leader coaching for a little bit. So uh, mainly right now, just working with uh, Fosto one on one. And it's more of like getting together and reviewing a session or hands like right now I'm editing a vlog from a, a live stream I played and it was a live stream where I won the most money I'd ever won on a, in a game but I don't feel like I played very good <laughs> so we're gonna like go over that a little bit and um we definitely go over a lot of tournament stuff lately so we used to do a lot of cash now it's more like tournament strategy um so with with that uh, other thing I want to segue in do you play anything online do you play any online poker at all I used to, and I did really enjoy streaming on my YouTube channel for a while, but I'm really more of a live tournament player. I, I do enjoy it occasionally, but now I just, when I'm home, I don't have the time to sit and grind because I have so many other things I need to do. So um, just don't get a lot of online play in, but I just feel like live is so much softer and so many more tells and things you can pick up on. Whereas, you know, online, you don't know who you're playing against. You can't really get much info. Yeah, I feel that. But I definitely prefer live for sure. Yeah, plus you got I mean you you're in Texas now, right? So you are you playing where at the lodge or where where's your home base now? My home base is Texas Card House Dallas. Um okay. so they're they're my home poker room in in the Dallas area. That's the only place I play. And then um in Austin, I I go to the lodge about once a month or so. They have a great tournament series. I love the lodge. I love playing on the live stream. I love the cash games there. It's really awesome. Yeah, it's on my list to um well, you got to check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's on my list to get there and do like a little vlog about traveling to the different places there. I try to do something different every year, but you know, me and Brian both have kids and we have full-time jobs outside of poker, so it's hard to kind of schedule that stuff. Florida and Vegas are our main two like spots we've kind of hit on the regular besides obviously New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um but Texas is like definitely on the map where I want to get down there. I haven't oh, heard gotta like check really it out. Yeah, anything <laughs> negative for the most part. No, there's there's just the best games like in the country sometimes over there just depending and even the live stream games like get really big and they're juicy and they're fun as a lot of like businessmen just whales who just love to just punt give money yes. away and I've, that's how i won a lot of money on these live streams was just you know finding spots against these types of players and uh yeah the lodge has great action Texas card house is also awesome and that's where i play here i've been doing a lot of vlogs over there lately so well, sticking with um, that, let me, I, hold on. Let me. Yeah. I have a question, Ant, real yeah. quick. Go ahead, go ahead. So I know you said you you are now into tournament poker, but you know you you found things, um, you know, with cash. Uh, what what is the most you've won at a single cash game table, like in one session? Yeah. Um. So I've usually mostly played pretty lower stakes. So I never really had any crazy cash game wins. Just very small, like smallish wins at a time type of thing. And um. But the, on this live stream I just played in, I think I won like uh four thousand and something, which was the most I had won in a in a session. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good run. That's a good. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Play, I don't play very high stakes either. So really, my wins are like you know two hundred here, four hundred there, eight hundred there, and. Um, sometimes, you know, the, yeah, those nice little bigger sessions on uh, the live streams have gone pretty well though, overall. So it's been nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, that's pretty much all I had. Brian, did you have anything else you want to touch on? Yeah. A few things. Um, just kind of like to get to know you a little bit more. So you're at the poker table. Are you an ear pods, headphones, or none of the above type person? So back before I started my vlog, I my happy place, because I'm an introvert, I like to be alone. My happy place was putting in my headphones and zoning out everybody and just sitting there and playing. But after I started my vlog, you know, people want to come up or they want to play with me or talk with me. So I really try to stay away from putting in headphones. However, when I was playing like the main events, or, um, this last main event or uh, events that I'm taking a little bit seriously, I do love to put in the headphones and listen to my music and kind of vibe out a little bit. Um, and I don't think, think I'm not paying attention to you. I just have notes on my phone and I just got the text oh, from my you, wife that, you get that they're on their way back, which is like a five minute warning. Um, <laughs> but you said you were a musician. What kind of music did you, uh, well, what kind of music do you play? Cause you're not, you're not, you're still a musician, but like, what was your, what was your genre? Yeah, I um, so I was in a few like Christian rock bands way back in the day, which I hope those videos never surface. So oh my goodness, well, how um, do we find you? <laughs> <laughs> Insert um, video clip yeah. here, right here. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> 
Um, but uh, so I loved like I was in like some R and B type soul type bands. We did a lot of covers of like real chill like vibe type music. And then uh, my favorite band was a gypsy jazz band. So it was like you know kind of swingy type jazz music. So that was really fun. But uh, I play the piano. I used to like produce music. I used to make uh, write oh, wow. movie scores and soundtracks and that sort of thing. But uh, awesome. I don't have much time for that anymore. But I do like to sit down when I get home and just kind of use it to unwind these days. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Uh, if you know, I don't know if you know what kind of our uh, niche is. We do poker with nerd enthusiasts, but there's other like platforms where we have other, um, you know, people affiliated with the company that will do music or movies or video games and things like that. So I saw that you posted something about the Mario Brothers movie, and that <laughs> stood out to me because, like, I, and I'm not trying to sound like I don't know misogynist, but like video games and females don't really go hand in hand now they do but not people of your age what was your favorite video game when you were a kid mario 64 uh mario party i mean i could list a million banjo and kazooie wave race mortal kombat nice, I don't know name. Nice. So I'm, actually, I'm actually a huge huge video game nerd like huge video game nerd I, I actually have a gaming channel where i stream myself playing call of duty a, a lot so um, I actually play semi-competitively Call of Duty, but anyway, I could talk about that all day. No, I <laughs> so, well, what? Well, that, <laughs> you know what? Maybe down the road, are because we have the guys that do the gaming podcast on Nerd Thews, so maybe down the road, you could do an interview about that down the road about your gaming platform and whatnot. I oh, cool. would love to. I love. I could talk video. I actually wanted to start a video game podcast. Like, I still want to eventually, and literally, it'll be like a nostalgic like reflect back on like the N64 days, the Super Man. Mario, the Nintendo, the, you know, uh, the GameCube, yes. like yes. I want to just talk about the old school games. Like that's a huge fashion of mine. I have like every system. I have, I have a whole collection of stuff. Yeah. Sh that's shout out awesome. to Nerd Enthusiast uh, gaming channel. If you guys haven't seen that out, go check that out because that's what they, they talk about a lot of retro stuff on our I side. Love on yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It's so cool. <laughs> that's cool, all I got, though. man. That's awesome. Great. Well, um, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, I think you're gonna the run's gonna continue. I, I feel a good vibe here. Like I said, we're a lucky podcast, so you're you're probably good to go. Um, thank and you. <laughs> um, we'll have to maybe run into you in the main this summer. And yes, um, if you see me, please stop me and say hi. Yeah, please. we'll get a photo we'll together. Have... We'll uh, we'll hang yeah, out for a little bit. We'll, we'll talk uh, Christian rock bands and video <laughs> games and whatever. I'm definitely finding that video. I'm gonna go on. I'm yep. gonna go on a search. So but I, listen, I am down for hustling for some side action uh, for some basketball. Yes, though, absolutely. So we'll <laughs> make that happen. Good. I'll set up. Listen, I'm good at setting stuff up like that. So we'll I'll hustle some people. We'll get we'll make it happen. Awesome. Thank you guys uh, so much for having me. It was an absolute blast. Um, So let's just put it out there. Where can people follow you? Uh, your YouTube, your Twitter. You want to throw that stuff out there real quick? Yeah, I'm pretty much Poker Face Ash on everything. My YouTube is Poker Face Ash. Instagram, I'm Poker Face underscore Ash. And on Twitter, Poker Face underscore Ash underscore and um yeah and tiktok same thing poker face ash so yeah. all right well thank you guys for following thank you guys for hanging out with us um if you guys have not make sure that you subscribe to the nerd enthusiast youtube channel you can also find us on tiktok twitter instagram we also have a patreon page with the exclusive footage that we have for all our nerd enthusiast channels so make sure that you at home are following and you check that out and make sure you please follow poker face ash on her poker adventures and uh we appreciate it. we see you guys on the next one thank you Thank you. Thanks.